This is my trigonometry course. Today we're going to learn the sum and difference identities. If you haven't done the homework completely and correctly from the last class, do that homework before watching this video. You see we have four formulas here. Uh, this purple formula tells us how to find the sine of the sum of two angle measures. And this yellow formula tells us how to find the sine of the difference of two angle measures. And we have the uh, corresponding cosine identities also. These formulas are very important in the uh, trigonometry curriculum. And so you're going to need to memorize them. They're going to be most important when it comes to deriving other equations. Uh, now, the proofs of these formulas are uh, not something that you're really going to be required to know. If I chose a hundred random high school math teachers, I would be shocked if one of them could prove these formulas without consulting a textbook. Uh, it's not that it's difficult to do, it's just not something that you're required to do. Now, I would show you the proof, but generally speaking, the proof is not very satisfying. Uh, it's it's not going to be the situation where you see the proof and think, oh, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's not something that is exactly obvious. So I'm not going to uh, try to bore you with the proof or scare you with the proof. Because, again, you're not going to be required to know it. But if you want to see the proof, just let me know. And we can uh, go over that in a separate video. So notice that these two formulas are very similar. The only difference is down here we have a negative symbol. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this formula and I'm going to erase the positive symbol and instead of plus uh, uh, a plus b I'm going to write a plus or minus b and over here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to uh, erase the positive symbol and replace it with a plus or minus symbol. And what this means is that if we have a sum over here, then this symbol should be positive, uh, a positive sign. And we have, if we have a difference over here, if this is a minus b, then over here we should have a, uh, a negative sign. So that's just a way we can condense those two formulas so that we don't have to write them. And we're going to do the same thing down here, but notice when we're finding the cosine of the sum of two angle measures, we subtract, so it's the opposite sign. We subtract these two expressions. And over here, when we're finding the cosine of the, of the difference of two angle measures, we add the two expressions. So it's a little bit different, but I'm still going to condense these two formulas into one. So I'm going to erase this bottom formula. And I'm going to replace the, uh, the uh, plus sign with a plus or minus symbol, as we did previously. And over here, instead of a plus or minus symbol, I'm going to use a minus or plus symbol because the, uh, the signs are going to be opposite. So what this means is that if you're trying to find the uh, cosine of the sum of two angle measures, then you subtract the expressions because the positive symbol and the negative symbol are both on the top. If you are trying to find the cosine of a difference of two angle measures, then you add these two expressions because uh, the negative symbol and the positive symbol are on the bottom. So that's that's how that works. We haven't used that type of uh, notation in the past, but it's just convenient so we can uh, combine those uh, two formulas. So I'm going to change these formulas uh, so that uh, they're both a violet color. So we remember these as the violet formulas. And now let's do some problems where we 
can practice these formulas. It's important that you memorize these formulas and understand how they work. The formulas themselves are not really uh, going to be used directly, but like I said, you're going to use these formulas to come up with other formulas that you are going to use directly in upper mathematics. So it says find the, the values of the following expressions without a calculator. Now we don't know how to find the sine of a 75 degree angle because this is not a special angle. So normally we would have to use a calculator for this. But because we have these identities, we can actually find the exact value of sine 75 degrees without a calculator. So I want you to take a picture of these formulas with your phone. It's very important that you take a picture of these and have them right in front of you as we do these problems. So I'm going to use the first formula. I'm going to change sine 75 degrees to sine 30 degrees plus 45 degrees. So don't you agree that 75 degrees is the same thing as 30 degrees plus 45 degrees? So all I did was just change the form of 75 to 30 plus 45. But now we can use this formula here to convert to this expression over here. So we have the sine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle plus the sine of the second angle times the cosine of the first angle. That again is this first formula. You should have that on your phone or you should have it in front of you somewhere. And the reason that we did that is because these are special angles. So we can find the sine of a 30 degree angle or the cosine of a 45 degree angle, whereas we could not find the sine of a 75 degree angle. So let's do a little review. In the previous classes we've been finding angles given ratios, but now we're going back to finding ratios given angles. So these are all acute angles, so they're all going to be in the first quadrant and if we have a 30 degree reference angle then obviously we're dealing with a 30, 60, 90 triangle and if we have a 45 degree uh, reference angle we're dealing with a 45, 45, 90 and this side would be x, this side would be 2x and x root 3 they're all positive because we're, we're in the first quadrant uh, acute angles and of course we have x, x, and x root 2. So let's find sine of the 30 degree angle. Sine is opposite, opposite side over hypotenuse. So that would be x over 2x, which of course simplifies to 1 half. And cosine 45 would be the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse x over x root 2 but the x's cancel out and we're left with 1 over root 2. Sine of a 45 degree angle is the opposite side of the reference angle divided by the hypotenuse. The x's cancel out and we're left with 1 over root 2. And cosine 30 degrees is the adjacent side uh, to the reference angle divided by the hypotenuse. So that would be root 3 over 2. Again, the x's cancel out. So this is all just review. You should know this stuff pretty well by now. I'm going to move that over there. So now we can just simplify that expression. Let's multiply these two fractions. When you multiply fractions, remember you multiply the numerators. 1 times 1 is 1 
and 2 times root 2 is 2 root 2. We multiply the denominators. And over here, 1 times root, through, root 3 is root 3, and 2 times root 2 is 2 root 2. So notice that we have a common denominator, which means that we can go ahead and add these fractions. So we have 1 plus root 3 over 2 root 2. But technically, this is uh, an irrational denominator, and we're not really supposed to leave our denominators as irrational expressions. So what we can do is rewrite and multiply both sides of the fraction by root 2, and that will rationalize the denominator. So we're going to use distribution in the numerator. Root 2 times 1 is root 2. And root 2 times root 3 is root 6. Now, if you're a little rusty on roots, you can go back to my intermediate algebra course, or my beginning algebra course. Uh, we just use the principle root a times root b is equal to root a b. So that should be something that you're very familiar with by now. And down here we're going to use the same principle. Root 2 times root 2 is root 4. And root 4 is equal to 2. And 2 times 2 is 4. So we don't really have a lot of room to show every step of that. But again, uh, if you are struggling with that, you can go back to my Intermediate Algebra course. OK, so let's try another one of these problems. Now we're going to use the cosine identity. I'm going to give you one more chance to take a picture of these with your phone. So we cannot find the cosine of a 105 degree angle. It's not a special angle. But let's change 105 degrees to 60 degrees plus 45 degrees. And I chose those angles because those are uh, special angles. So now we can use the cosine formula. We have cosine 60 degrees times cosine 45 degrees. And we're adding here, so with the cosine formula, the sine is always opposite. So now we're going to subtract over here. And we have sine 60 degrees times cosine 45 degrees. So now we can find those values. So if we draw the, uh, the triangles, they're all acute angles, so the, they're all going to be uh, the triangles are going to be in the first quadrants. And so we have a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle and a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. Again, this is all just review. The side opposite the 60 degree angle is always x root 3. And of course, we have 2x and x and x, x, and x root 2. So cosine 60 degrees is the side adjacent the reference angle divided by the hypotenuse. So that would be 1 over 2. And cosine 45 is the side adjacent the reference angle divided by the hypotenuse. And this is all review. Sine 60 is root 3 over 2. Cosine 45 is 1 over root 2. So we're going to multiply the fractions. 
We multiply these. And now let's multiply these. And we get root 3 over 2 root 2. We have a common denominator, so we're going to subtract. And there you go. <clears throat> but we need to uh, rationalize the denominator. I'm not going to show the steps for that because we already demonstrated how to do that. So we're going to multiply both sides by root 2. And we, we have root 2 minus root 6 over 4. All right. So now it's time for you to try. Go ahead and attempt number three. And uh, when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So we're gonna use the cosine formula. I'm gonna change 75 degrees to 30 plus 45 degrees. And cosine 30 is uh, root 3 over 2. And cosine 45 is 1 over root 2. Now, you, you might wonder, why am I not drawing the reference triangles? Well, uh, you can draw them on your own. You can look at these reference triangles and use them but at this point in the curriculum you really need to be doing that on your own so if you forgot them you can take a picture here and take a picture over here but you should really know these by now so sine 30 is one half and Uh, sine 45 is 1 over root 2. You don't really need two sets of parentheses, although it might be good for you to use two sets. Either way is fine. So now we're going to multiply these two fractions and we get root 3 over 2 root 2 minus 1 over 2 root 2 and we have a common denominator so we're going to add them up and we get root 3 minus 1 over 2 root 2. So as you can see, these expressions are very similar. That's because uh, of the nature of these types of problems. In order to demonstrate these formulas, you have to choose certain angles. And it just, it just so happens that the ratios end up being very similar in form. So now we're going to multiply both sides of the fraction by root 2, and we get root 6 minus root 2 over 4. Okay, so I want you to try number 4, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So we cannot find the sine of a 105 degree angle, but we can change 105 degrees to 60 degrees plus 45 degrees and use our sum formula. And it doesn't matter which number comes first. You're going to get the same answer. So sine 60 degrees is root 3 over 2. Cosine, 100, or cosine 45 degrees is 1 over root 2. Sine is 1 over root 2. Cosine is... Uh, one half. And again, you probably only need 
one set of parentheses for each one of these products. So now we have root 3 over 2 root 2 and you've seen this before so this is very similar to the problems that we did. Again it just so happens that these ratios are very similar. Multiply both sides by root 2 and we get root 6 plus root 2 over uh, 4. So we got that one right. Excellent. Okay, so now let's do some problems that are a little bit more difficult. Now we have a 195 degree angle. That's an angle that is in the uh, third quadrant. In the previous problems we did angles in the first quadrant and the second quadrant. This is an angle in the third quadrant, so we have to think about this. Um, there's, m there may be more than one way to do this, but we could uh, convert that 195 degree angle to 60 degrees plus 135 degrees. Don't you agree that 135 plus 60 is 195 degrees. So now we can use our sine formula. So we have sine 60 degrees times cosine 135 plus sine 135 times cosine uh, cosine 60 degrees. So sine 60 degrees is root 3 over 2. Now cosine 135, we have to look at the uh, second quadrant. So you're going to rotate 135 degrees, draw your reference triangle, subtract 135 from 180 to get your uh, reference angle, which of course is 45 degrees, and Of course we have negative x, x and x root 2. This is all very familiar to you. So cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, which would be negative x over x root 2. The x's cancel out and we're left with negative 1 over root 2. So the difference is we had a negative side. Now we can find sine 135 degrees. Look over here. That's the opposite side of the reference angle divided by the hypotenuse, so that's going to be positive 1 over root 2. And cosine 60 degrees, uh, that's uh, a first quadrant reference angle. And you can look up at the math that we did up here for that. Cosine is x over 2x. So as usual, we're just going to combine or, or multiply the fractions, that is. And we have negative root 3 plus 1 over 2 root 2. Multiply both sides by root 2. And we get negative root 6 plus root 2 over 4. And there you go. So let's try another one of those. We cannot find the cosine of a 285 degree angle uh, without a calculator. But if we use our, our sum formula for cosine, we can change that. But we have to think about this. Uh, there's possibly more than one way to do it, but I'm going to use 60 again. I'm going to uh, make that 60 degrees plus 225 degrees. 60 plus 225 is 285. And you might wonder, well, how do we know 
to find that sum. Well, you can just subtract 30 degrees, and if that doesn't work, you can subtract 60, and if that doesn't work, you can subtract 45, and just try to find angles that are familiar. So this is a familiar angle. We've seen that many, many times. That is a reference angle of 45 degrees. So now we get cosine 60 degrees times cosine 225 degrees minus sine 60 degrees times sine 225 and cosine 60 degrees is one half and cosine 225, let's draw that over here. This is a 225 degree angle. The reference angle, of course, is 45. Subtract 180 from 225. And our sides are negative x, negative x, and x root 2. So cosine 225 is the side adjacent to the reference angle divided by the hypotenuse. So we have negative 1 over root 2. And sine 60, we don't need to draw that. That's in the first quadrant. That's root 3 over 2. And sine 225, that's uh, the side opposite over the hypotenuse, which again is negative 1 over root 2. So now let's multiply the fractions and we get negative 1 over 2 root 2. And if we multiply these, we get a negative number. And if we're subtracting a negative, that becomes a positive. So our product is going to be positive root 3 over 2 root 2. And then we get negative 1 plus root 3 over 2 root 2. Again, these ratios are very similar because of the nature of these problems. And then we're going to multiply both sides by root 2 to get negative root 2 plus root 6 over 4. Okay, so now it's time for you to try. You're going to try to subtract something from 345 and find an angle that is similar. Notice that 225 and 135 are similar angles because they have reference angles that are 45. Uh, well, in both those cases, the reference angles were 45. Uh, so play around with number seven, see what you can do, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So I'm gonna change sine 345 degrees to sine 300 plus 45. There are different ways that you can do it. That's the way that I'm gonna use. And then we have sine 300 degrees times cosine 45 degrees plus sine 45 times cosine 300 degrees. And a 300 degree angle is in the fourth quadrant. And so this angle is 60 degrees. And the side opposite 60 is always x root 3. But in this case, it's negative, of course. So sine 300 degrees is the opposite side of the reference angle divided by the hypotenuse. So the x's cancel out. And we have negative root 3 over 2. 
cosine 45, we've already found that multiple times. That's a first quadrant reference triangle. And sine 45, we've already found that. Cosine 300 is the adjacent side of the reference angle divided by the hypotenuse. So that's going to be 1 half. And so now we can just simplify and we get negative root 3 over 2 root 2 plus 1 over 2 root 2. And we have negative root 3 plus 1 over 2 root 2. Multiply both sides of the fraction by root 2. And we get root 6, negative root 6 plus root 2 over 4. So if you got that right, perfect. Okay, so you can take a picture of these problems if you want to help you with uh, number 8. Go ahead and try number 8, and when you come back, we'll do it together. Okay, we're back. So... We could use 30 degrees and 225 degrees. That's one way to do it. There may be other ways. If you chose a different method, then that's fine. So we're going to get cosine 30 degrees times cosine 225 minus sine 30 degrees times sine 225 and cosine 30 degrees is root 3 over 2 and cosine 225 that's a third quadrant angle 45 45 90 triangle the adjacent side is uh, negative, so we're going to get negative 1 over root 2. And sine 30, that's going to be 1 over 2. And sine 225, the opposite side is also, also negative because it's a third quadrant uh, angle. So we have negative 1 over root 2. So we get negative root 3 over 2 root 2. And if you multiply these, you get a negative number. And if you're subtracting a negative number, that becomes a positive. So we have 1 over 2 root 2. And so now we're going to add these fractions up. And multiply both sides by root 2. And we get negative root 6 plus root 2 over 4. So again, a very familiar expression. Uh, now let's go on to uh, find sine, the sine of a 15 degree angle. Now we cannot use the sum formulas uh, or the sum formula for sine because there's no special angles that are less than 15. We can't say sine 6 degrees plus 9 degrees, that would be, because neither of these angles are special angles. So what do we do? Well, we have to use the difference formula. This is the first time that we're using the difference formula. So we can say 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. Don't you agree that 45 minus 30 is 15? We could also use 60 minus 45. You're going to get the same answer. So now let's use the difference formula. So we have sine 45 degrees times cosine 30 degrees minus 
make sure you get the right sign. Sine 30 degrees times cosine 45 degrees. So sine 45 is 1 over root 2 as we explained in previous problems. Cosine 30 is root 3 over 2. We have 1 half and 1 over root 2. Multiply, we get root 3 and again it's a very similar expression because of the nature of these problems and multiply both sides by root 2 and we get root 6 minus root 2 over 4 so I want you to try number 10 and when you come back we'll do it together okay we're back so again you can use 60 minus 45 or you can use 45 minus 30 I'm just going to uh, well I'm gonna use the 60 minus 45 just to do something different um, again you're gonna get the same answer if you use 60 minus 45 or 45 minus 30 so we have cosine 60 degrees times cosine 45 degrees and we're going to add because remember when you're subtracting with the cosine formula you add the terms in, at the right side of the equation sine 60 degrees times sine 45 degrees sine 60 degree, or cosine 60 is one half cosine 45 is 1 over root 2 sine 60 is root 3 over 2 sine 45 is 1 over root 2 and uh, we get 1 over 2 root 2 plus root 3 over 2 root 2 and if we add, we get 1 plus root 3 over 2 root 2. Multiply both sides by root 2, and we get root 2 plus root 6 over 4. So if you got that right, good job. So the purpose of these problems was to help you memorize the, the, uh, the sum and difference formulas. again these formulas generally speaking are not used very often directly but they're used in proofs and they're used to derive other formulas that are used directly in upper mathematics courses so let's do some more problems to help you remember those formulas and not only remember them but understand how they work so now we're going to go backwards. So look at your formulas. Now we're starting on the right side of the formulas. We're starting on this side and we're going in the other direction. So this, these problems tell us to simplify the following expressions and write exact expressions so we're not going to use a calculator so our our angles are x and 2x x and 2x and we have the product of sine and cosine product of sine and cosine so we're going to combine to a sine expression and because we're adding we add x and 2x because we have an addition symbol here so again this is just using those formulas so now we add x and 2x and we get as you would imagine 3x it's probably best to use parentheses just to be uh, clear to avoid any ambiguities 
So there you go. Now it doesn't matter if you switch the order of the products. It doesn't make any difference. Um, or if you switch the order of these terms. So let's try a couple more of these. Now we have a product of cosines and a product of sines. So that means we're going to use a cosine function. And uh, our two angles are 7 theta and 2 theta. 7 theta and 2 theta. So we are going to put those together. And it actually does not matter what the order is. I know that's kind of strange, but when you're dealing with the cosine function, you can say 7 theta minus 2 theta, or 2 theta minus 7 theta. It actually doesn't matter. Again, I know that's kind of confusing, but because the 7 theta occurs first, we'll just write that first. Now, how did I, how did I know that it's subtraction? Well, because we have the, the positive sign here, the plus sign. So remember, with the cosine function, if it's a plus sign here, then it should be a negative sign here. It's the opposite sign. So we get cosine uh, 7 theta minus 2 theta is 5 theta. And again, it's probably best to use parentheses to avoid confusion. OK, so now we have actual angle measures rather than variables, but these problems work the same way. We have a product of sine and cosine, so that's going to be a sine formula. And notice we're subtracting, so we're going to subtract the angles. So we have 18 degrees minus 24 degrees, and that simplifies to negative 6 degrees. So we're just going to leave the expression in that form. We could use a calculator to approximate, but the directions tell us uh, you don't have to use a calculator. So we're just going to leave it in exact form. If we used a calculator, we'd have to round off. We don't want to round off. So we're just going to leave it in the exact form. So let's try one more of these before you try one on your own. We have a product of cosines and a product of sines. So um, we have a, a subtraction symbol, which means that we're actually going to add the, uh, the angles. Remember, when you have the cosine function, which is a product of cosines and a product of sines, the, the sines are going to be opposite. So if you subtract here, you add there. So we get cosine uh, 59 degrees. So there you go. As you can see, this is very easy. And you might be wondering, why are we doing this if it's so easy? Well, the, the primary purpose of this is to uh, show you how these formulas work. So you're not only learning uh, the formulas and memorizing them, but you're also uh, learning how the formulas work. So try number 15, and when you come back, we'll do it together. OK, we're back. So we have a product of sine and cosine, which means we're going to use our sine function. And we have a subtraction symbol, so we're going to subtract 3b minus 8b is equal to negative 5b. And again, it's probably best to use parentheses to avoid confusion, especially when you have a negative symbol. Okay, so if you got that one right, good job. I'm going to write that a little better. Okay, go ahead and take a picture of these problems to help you with number 16. And I want you to try number 16. And when you come back, we'll do it together. Okay, we're back. So we have a product of cosines and a product of sines. So 
So we're going to use the cosine function. And we have a subtraction symbol. So remember, it's going to be the opposite sine. So we have 6 omega plus omega. And that simplifies to cosine 7 omega. So if you got that one right, good job. Go ahead and try number 17, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. We have a product of sine and cosine. So we're going to use the sine function, and we're going to add those angle measures. And we get sine 110 degrees. And because there's no negative symbol or uh, uh, coefficient with a variable, we don't have to use parentheses. Go ahead and try number 18. And when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. So we have a product of cosines and a product of sines. Um, so we're going to use the cosine function. And we have an addition symbol, so we're going to use the opposite sign. We're going to subtract 25 degrees from 75 degrees. And we get cosine 50 degrees. Again, we don't need parentheses in that case. So if you got that one right, excellent. Okay, so now we're going to do proofs. But don't, don't be worried, these problems are not going to be very difficult. This is just uh, another opportunity to help us remember these formulas and to show how they work. So it says, prove that the following equations are true by converting the left side to the right side. So we're going to convert the left side we're going to leave the right side alone. Now sine x plus y, look at your violet formulas. That's equal to sine x times cosine y plus sine y times cosine x. So this formula here, or that expression became this expression here. Then we're going to subtract, and we need to use parentheses because we're going to subtract a difference of two expressions. Uh, sine x minus y is equal to sine x times cosine y minus sine y times cosine x. And so this expression here became that. I'm going to rewrite the blue expression. And when you're subtracting a sum or a difference, you have to assume that this negative here is represents a negative 1. And you can distribute that negative 1 negative 1 times this and negative 1 times this. Another way of thinking about it is just this is a positive uh, term so when you subtract it becomes a negative term. And this is a negative term when you subtract it becomes a positive term. So now I want you to notice uh, let me get a different color here. I want you to notice that this term here and this term are the same, except they're opposites. So those are going to cancel out. And these terms are going to be left, and you can add them up, and you get uh, 2. 2 sine y 
cosine x because 1 sine y cosine x plus 1 sine y cosine x is 2 sine y cosine x's. And so we did it. We can put a check mark because we proved that that equation is true. So let's try another one of these. We're going to prove that this side is equal to this side by changing the form of the left side. I always want you to start on the left side. So we're going to change cosine 3x to cosine uh, 2x plus x. And then we can use our cosine formula that we learned today. That becomes cosine 2x times cosine x minus sine 2x times sine x. And notice that these terms here are the same the same term and the products are in the different order here we have sine 2x first and here we have sine 2x second but that doesn't matter because of the commutative rule of multiplication I'm gonna write that a little better so those terms cancel out and we're left with cosine 2x times cosine x which is exactly what we have up here so we did it we proved that that equation is true let's try one more of these before you try one on your own so now we have actual angle measures rather than variables We need to convert cosine 50 degrees into this expression, which is going to be pretty easy. I'm going to convert 50 degrees to 130 minus 80 degrees. And then I'm going to use my uh, violet formulas. So we have 130 degrees times cosine 80, cosine 130 degrees times cosine 80. And we're subtracting, so we're going to add. Remember, it's the opposite sign when you're dealing with the cosine function. And that's it. We're done. So we proved it. That was kind of an easy problem. Again, the whole purpose of these problems is to uh, not only help you to remember the formulas but also to learn how to use them so I want you to try number 22 you can use number 19 to help you and when you come back we'll do it together alright we're back so cosine alpha minus beta is the same thing as cosine uh, alpha times cosine beta plus sine alpha times sine beta and cosine alpha and by the way I'm gonna color those uh, cosine alpha plus beta is cosine alpha times cosine beta minus sine alpha times sine beta And you can see that uh, this term here and this term here are the same, but they're just opposite signs. 
so they're going to cancel out and we're left with uh, we can add these two up because they're the same term so cosine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha cosine beta is 2 cosine alpha cosine beta so if you got that right excellent we proved that that equation is true try number 23 you can use number 20 to help you and when you come back we'll do it together all right we're back so sine 5 theta can be changed to sine 3 theta plus 2 theta and I'm using 3 theta and 2 theta because we have 3 theta and 2 theta here and sine 3 theta plus 2 theta we can use our violet formulas to change that to sine 3 theta times cosine 2 theta plus sine 2 theta times cosine 3 theta so let's double check that and make sure we did everything correctly looks right and now you can uh, you can probably tell that there are some terms that cancel out uh, this term here and this term here so we're left with sine 2 theta times cosine 3 theta and there you go we proved it so if you got that one right excellent now if you end up with the with it with a different order let's say you end up with cosine 3 theta times sine 2 theta so if, if cosine theta comes first that's okay I don't really care about that you can do one more step and use the commutative rule of multiplication but I don't I don't really care that's not really that important try number 24 and when you come back we'll do it together alright we're back so on the right side of the equation I have 260 degrees and 7 degrees so I'm going to change 253 to 260 minus 7 and I have to use our violet formulas that's it we're done just double check the work make sure we got everything right and there you go so if you got that answer perfect excellent okay on to number 25 these are very similar problems uh, we're going to convert this sine of a sum of angle measures to show that this side of the equation is equal to this side so we have sine uh, sine a times cosine 180 degrees plus sine 180 degrees times cosine a plus 1 so that plus 1 came from there that was already in the equation so this expression here became all of that and we need to find the sine of a 180 degree angle but 180 degrees is what we call a quadrantal angle it represents a collapsed triangle so we need to find cosine the cosine of 180 degrees 
So that would be here, and the cosine value is negative 1. Remember, we always use our graphs when we have quadrantal angles. So we can change cosine 180 to negative 1. Now it's best to use parentheses. In fact, you need to use parentheses here. If you don't, then it'll cause a lot of confusion. And you definitely need to use parentheses here. So I want you to write two sets of parentheses. Um, or else uh, the expression is not going to be correct. Sine 180 degrees, again that's a quadrantal angle, so we need to look at our graphs. 180 degrees is here and the y value is 0. So sine 180 degrees is 0. Sine A times negative 1 is negative sine A. And 0 times cosine A is 0, because 0 multiplied by anything is 0. And then we're left with negative sine A plus 1. And if you want to make things nice and neat, you can switch the terms around. And there you go. So we proved the equation. So let's try one more of these before you try one on your own. So we have cosine now, so I'm going to change that to cosine A times cosine 90 degrees. And we're going to write a plus sign because when you have a minus sign for cosine, it's, it's, it's going to be the opposite sign. So now we have sine A times sine 90 degrees minus sine A. And again, that sine A came from there. That was already in the equation. So this expression became that there. And cosine 90 degrees, uh, we need to use our graph because that's a quadrantal angle representing a collapsed triangle. So we look for 90 degrees and ask for the y value of that red curve, and it's 0. So cosine 90 is 0 degrees. And to avoid confusion, you really need to write two sets of parentheses. And sine 90 degrees, we need our graphs. Again, that's a quadrantal angle representing a collapsed triangle. We look for 90 degrees and ask for the y value of the corresponding point. The y value is 1. So sine 90 degrees is 1. But again, to avoid confusion, use two sets of parentheses. 0 times cosine A is 0. 1 times sine A is sine A. And we, of course, have 0 plus 0, which is 0. You don't have to write all those zeros, but I'm just being thorough. So we proved it. We proved that the left side of the equation is equal to 0. So I want you to try number 27. You're going to need these graphs in front of you, so take a picture of these graphs because we have quadrantal angles. Try number 27, and when you come back, we'll do it together. All right, we're back. Uh, cosine B plus 270 is cosine B times cosine 270 minus sine B times sine 270 and we need to find the cosine of a 270 degree angle that would be here that's a zero and 
use two sets of parentheses to avoid confusion. We need to find the sine of a 270 degree angle. That's going to be negative 1. <clears throat> and again, use two sets of parentheses to avoid confusion. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to rewrite that cosine b, and by the way, I need to show that that expression converted to, to that. Cosine b times 0 is 0, of course, and sine b times negative 1 is negative sine b. And negative sine b, if you subtract that, it becomes a positive, so we have positive sine b. And then we can rearrange the, the terms to make it look exactly like the right side of the equation. And we're done. So if you got that one right, perfect. Go ahead and try number 28. And when you come back, we'll do it together. OK, we're back. So I'm going to convert the left side of the equation to sine x times cosine 360 degrees minus sine 360 degrees times cosine, uh, cosine x. And cosine 360 degrees, we need to go to our cosine 360 degrees is 1. and use two sets of parentheses to avoid confusion. And we need to find the sine of a 360 degree angle. As you can see, that's going to be zero. So zero times cosine x is obviously zero. And sine x times 1 is sine x. So to make things look nice and neat, we can simplify. And we did it. We proved that that equation is true. OK. So now we're going to find the tangent of a 75 degree angle. The problem is we don't have a formula for tangent. So how do we do this? Well, it's very simple. We can just convert to sine 75 degrees over cosine 75 degrees. And we have formulas for sine and cosine. Uh, again, this angle is not a special angle, so that's why we have to do this. We used a ratio identity. And then we can convert, as we did, to sine 30 plus 45 over cosine 30 plus 45 and sine is going to be sine 30 degrees times cosine 45 plus sine 45 times cosine 30 and cosine 30 times cosine 45 minus sine 30 times sine 45. But you can see that this is going to be pretty tedious. We already found the values for sine 75 and cosine 75. So we can skip forward a little bit. Sine 75 is root 2 plus root 6 over 4. And cosine 75 degrees is root 2 minus root, or root 6 minus root 2. Root 6 minus root 2 over 4. 
so we don't really need a formula for tangent although we can derive one we can just use um, our knowledge of the sine and cosine formulas so the tangent formula is really not that important although we may derive it uh, later on if we have time so now what do we do here well uh, the easiest way to simplify this is just simply multiply both sides of the fraction by 4 and all these 4's are going to cancel out that's the easiest way to do it but some students prefer to use uh, the old division symbol so remember a fraction symbol can be interpreted as the division operation so that fraction became this division symbol and when you're dividing fractions you flip the divisor and change the multiplication and the fours are going to cancel out and you're left with root 2 plus root 6 over root 6 minus root 2 and don't try to cancel out any of these terms because that doesn't work they're sums and differences if they were products then you could cancel out but they're not products so that's it we're done now there are some uh, easier ways to do this we'll demonstrate in the next problem uh, but uh, if you have uh, the sine of a function then you can find the other five uh, functions of that angle as we learned in previous classes so that's what we're doing here the problem is we have a uh, denominator with uh, roots irrational numbers so technically we're not supposed to have rational numbers or irrational numbers in the denominator but uh, this is going to require a special trick that we learned in my intermediate algebra course to rationalize that denominator and so the math is going to get quite a bit more complex and that's why a lot of in fact pretty much almost every curriculum skips this because this is not really the point of this class to learn how to rationalize denominators but uh, since we have a, a little more time let's go ahead and review that so we're going to multiply both sides by root 6 plus root 2 why are we doing that because in the denominator we have root 6 minus root 2 so we multiply by root 6 plus root 2 and the reason we're going to do that is it's going to uh, rationalize the denominator it's a math trick and you might wonder am I supposed to know that trick and the answer is yes you should be familiar with that trick if you're not familiar with it or you're rusty on it that's okay again we learned this in my intermediate algebra course but we can review it right now again we don't want to spend a lot of time on this because this is not what the class is about um, I'm going to continue to write my equal sign so we're going to use FOIL to multiply the uh, numerator so we have root 2 times root 6 is root 12 root 2 times root 2 is of course root 4 which becomes 2 root 6 times root 6 is root 36 which becomes 6 and root 6 times root 2 is root 12 so we multiplied the numerator in the bottom we have root 6 times root 6 is root 36 root 6 times root 2 is root 12 negative root 2 times root 6 is negative root 12 and negative root 2 times root 2 is negative root 4 
so you can see that this is pretty tedious and by the way we use FOIL the the uh, the algorithm the acronym that's used to describe the algorithm so again this is going to be review uh, we're going to pull out a perfect square 12 is 4 times 3 4 comes out as a perfect square the square root of 4 is 2 the square root of 36 is 6 pull out a perfect square again and in the bottom something uh, special happens we get root 36 is 6 these cancel out so we don't really have to change the form and root 4 is 2 and maybe I should write 0 just to show that those inner terms uh, canceled out so I'm going to color these just so we can see exactly what happened to those numbers. And 2 root 3 plus 2 root 3 is 4 root 3. And 2 plus 6 is 8. And 6 minus 2 is 4. And believe it or not, we can actually reduce that. When you're dividing a sum or difference by a number, you can divide each term in the sum or difference by that number. So 4, that's going to be 4 root 3 over 4 plus 8 over 4. You don't have to show that intermediate step. We get root 3 plus 2. So that is the answer. So generally speaking, you don't really see these problems very often because it's again it's not the point of this class and as you can see the math is very tedious now notice that we found the value of uh, tangent 75 degrees even though we didn't have a formula that helped us to find that value directly as we did with uh, sine and cosine the same is true for uh, the other trigonometric ratios. We can find the remaining four trigonometric ratios if we have the sine and the cosine ratio. In fact, we only really need one of them, but it turns out that having both of them is uh, going to make it much easier for us. And the next problem, we're going to be asked to find cosecant of that same angle, secant, and cotangent of that same angle without a calculator. But again, you're going to find that we don't uh, need special formulas for those uh, uh, types of uh, trigonometric functions. We only need the sine and the cosine formulas. So that's why you're only really given a formula for sine and a formula for cosine uh, of the uh, sum or difference of angles. So let me demonstrate what I mean. If we have sine and cosine, we found the tangent value given sine and cosine. And if we have the sine and the cosine value, we can draw a triangle. And maybe I'll make it a different color. And our angle is 75 degrees. Doesn't look like a 75 degree angle, but that doesn't really matter. Now think about this, if we know that sine, the blue sine 75, is root 2 plus root 6 over 4, then we can assume that the opposite side of the reference angle is root 2 plus root 6. So I'm going to write that in, root 2 plus root 6. And of course, we can assume the hypotenuse is 4, because it says the, the ratio of the sides opposite divided by the hypotenuse is root 6 plus root uh, 2 over 4. Now, these are not the exact side lengths of the triangle necessarily. We're just finding a relation between the side lengths, because again, these functions are ratios, so the fractions may reduce and uh, numbers can cancel out. Now we also know that cosine 75 is root 6 minus root 2 over 4 so we can assume that the 
adjacent side to the angle is root 6 minus root 2. So at that point, we have all the sides of the triangle, and we can find any ratio. So that is why we don't have special formulas for tangent, cotangent, secant, or cosecant. We just don't need them. So let's take this triangle and move it over. and use it to find uh, the remaining values that we have not found the, uh, the, the values of the functions of those that uh, 75 degree angle so let's find cosecant 75 degrees first cosecant is the hypotenuse over the opposite side and you're done so it's that that quick so do you see why we don't really need formulas for every uh, every ratio out of the six total we only need sine and cosine now technically the denominator is not rationalized so if you wanted to rationalize you'd have to multiply both sides of the fraction by root 2 minus root 6 and that special trick would get rid of the uh, um, or it would rationalize the denominator, but we don't really have time for that. Uh, and it's really not that important, to be honest with you, to, to be focusing a lot of time on that. Secant 75 degrees, that's the hypotenuse over the adjacent side. So we have 4 over root 6 minus root 2. Again, it's not rationalized, but we don't really care at this point. It's not the purpose of this class we don't want to get bogged down with all that and cotangent 75 that's the uh, adjacent side over the uh, opposite side so that's root 6 minus root 2 over root 2 plus root 6 so again do you see why we don't need special formulas for for each of these uh, functions. We just need sine a plus b, uh, sine a minus b, cosine a plus b, and cosine a minus b. We don't need tangent a plus b, or a minus b, or cotangent a plus b, a minus b, or cosecant a plus b, a minus b, or secant a plus b, a minus b. Now there are formulas for the other functions for example, here's a formula for the tangent a plus b function. And you can see the math is a little bit involved. But again, you don't really have to know this formula. It's not really worth your time to memorize this. There's a slightly different formula for tangent a minus b. And there's formulas for cosecant a plus b and cotangent a plus b and so on and so forth. But uh, you don't have to know those. So that is the class today. If you'd like to take screenshots of all the work that we did to help you with your homework or to study for tests, go ahead and do that now. Here's screenshot number one. And screenshot number two. And number three. number four and number five and number six and number seven but don't go before you get your homework let's take a look at the homework here's screenshot number one of the homework and screenshot number two and number three but don't go before you get the answers 
Here's the answers to the homework. Make sure you do the homework completely and correctly. And uh, keep it in order in your binder. And remember, if you don't do that homework and do it correctly, it's 100% guarantee that you're going to learn absolutely nothing in the entire course. So get that homework done, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next class.